Hello, my name is Dino Samartsis. I'm a member here at the Department of Orthopedics and Traumatology at the University of Hong Kong in Hong Kong. I am currently in the uh, Arthur Hodgson Library here at the department with uh, our esteemed guest and colleague and friend, Dr. John O'Brien, who was uh, a member here at the department uh, back in the late 60s up until the mid-1970s. Mm -hmm. And we thought it would be a nice opportunity, since Dr. O'Brien is also visiting Hong Kong, to catch up uh, with, with you and to kind of get a, some of your recollections and reflections of your time here in Hong Kong and, and your career in uh, spine surgery and research. So mm -hmm. welcome, Dr. O'Brien, back to the Department of Orthopedics and Traumatology in Hong Kong. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dina. Uh, it's great to be back here. And I can't believe all those years have flashed by. Um, I was here for the first time in January 68. It was the week of the Tet Offensive in, Viet in the Vietnam War. And there were very troubled times in Asia. And I was, uh, I had developed an interest in spinal uh, problems um, in the mid-60s, uh, partly stirred by my mother who had a, a disc problem and disc surgery way back in the mid-50s. And she had disc surgery and uh, was never right. She had persisting sciatica and developed a scoliosis. And uh, I was quite, um, I was always focused on that problem. And when I heard from uh, a dear colleague, Jack Jens, in Ballarat, Australia, that this, uh, that this department and Professor Hodson was here, I contacted him uh, with a view to coming here for six months um, from Edinburgh, where I had been working, uh, to, to come here for six months to do spinal surgery. I see, I see. So, I mean, your, your mother inspired you to, to think about spine surgery. Who was the inspiration for you just to get into medicine? Oh, uh, uh, well, up, I think... You grew up in Australia. I'm yeah, I, I grew up in Sydney. Uh, I was the eldest of six, five boys and a girl. Uh, my dad was a surgeon. Uh, three of my, two of my brothers also be, uh, did medicine, one in plastic surgery and one in... Uh, orthopedics really? and joint surgery and uh, dad was a great influence on our lives but I don't remember any particular point where he sat us down and said look uh, it'd be a good idea if you did medicine I think it was really uh, a question of the good example the, the demonstration he was a powerful influence on our lives obviously uh, but we all did medicine at Sydney University and uh, the three of us did, and uh, all then did all like at our dad became fellows of the Royal College of Surgeons um, in Edinburgh. And so uh, that was really the background, but in, in those early years in medicine, mum had this disc problem, which I didn't know anything about a disc. I subsequently had problems with my own back, but that was the early uh, that the seed was sown thinking about mum's problem and her continuing disability I see. after the after the disc surgery, which apparently uh, looked initially to be okay, but was so, uh, subsequently, I mean, she had problems for the rest of her life. Oh, I see, I see. So you trained then, and uh, you went to the UK. I did, uh, I did three basic years uh, after graduation. I, I did them at, Sid, at uh, St. Vincent's Hospital in Sydney. Uh, I was then uh, persuaded, I, thought, I then thought surgery would be the way I, orthopedics seemed to me to be the most attractive specialty. So I, um, uh, then the practice was to do a year's anatomy after the three basic years of of clinical work, residency. Um, I then did, um, 
I then couldn't get a, uh, a job. Uh, the, the thing used to be to get a job teaching in anatomy. Um, and I couldn't get a job at Sydney University. So I was appointed uh, to the University of British Columbia in Vancouver and did a year's, in my fourth year after graduation, I did a year's training in anatomy, teaching in anatomy over there, then went on from that. Um, I did some research, orthopedic research work as well in Canada, and then went on to uh, Edinburgh to do my uh, primary and then subsequently my fellowship. I see. So yeah. what, did, what, what type of research did you do in Canada? Well, I got very, I was working with a guy, Leonard Belanger, who was uh, in Vancouver, who was a, uh, one of the great uh, men in the metabolism of the osteocyte. And he was doing a sabbatical. He was from the University of Ottawa. He was doing a, a sabbatical with uh, Kopp, Leonard Kopp, in, uh, in the Department of Physiology at UBC. Now, Kopp actually was the discoverer of calcitonin. So this was the, uh, after parathormone, and this was the next uh, interesting sure. hormone to do with calcium metabolism. And so this was an exciting time, actually, in 63 in Vancouver. So I did a year's anatomy and also assisted these men in doing really terrific research. I was really a dog's body in the lab, but I was, we were doing animal uh, work with small animals. And uh, it was very, um, it excited me enough to con certainly to continue and to pursue orthopedics. I see. But what do you think planted the seed, you know, for, for you to have uh, this interest in research and just, uh, just to pursue I, research look, during I, your time there? It was really, the fact was, these guys had never met an Aussie. Cop, I think, may have. Cop was a Californian who went up to Vancouver at the time of the McCarthy trials, I think. That's going back. But he was a great intellect. And Belanger was French-Canadian. And they really took an interest in, in me and encouraged me to do stuff, to read stuff, to research. And that was really a very early um, stimulus, really. Uh, I must say, what got me going in, um, uh, if I can move on from that, into spines, was I did a locum for a guy, Jack Jens, in Ballarat, Australia. And uh, this, I'd only done six months in orthopedics in training at, the, at Stanmore in, in London. And I was quite uh, excited that he was doing... I suppose 80 or 90 percent of his week was spinal work, surgery and treatment and conservative treatment and just looking at the problem of back pain. I got really quite interested and he said to me, look, if you uh, maintain any interest in the spine, I suggest you go and work with a friend of mine, Hoddy, in Hong Kong. I see. That was the first time I'd heard the name. Hodson is his nickname, but uh, Hodson at the time... Uh, well, this is early, this is mid '60s. He was then he he uh, he had then been working for some ten years in the surgical treatment of spinal TB, mm -hmm. and he was writing the most amazing papers with most uh, wonderful results. And uh, when I started reading the work, stimulated by what Jack Jens had told me, and um, I started reading this stuff. Uh, and he didn't write that much, but his stuff was uh, very, very well compelling, written, very compelling, compelling and I, I thought I should go and see this. You know, did your other, did your contemporaries feel the same way about that type of material? They or didn't you, at you all, think, actually. Uh, I was then at that like time. I was working in London at Stanmore, and then at, uh, and then in Edinburgh, and I don't remember anyone else getting particularly excited about it. I mean, I could see. You see, the spines was not a specialty at all then. I mean, you, spines was under the umbrella of orthopedic surgery. And uh, there may be an odd disc operation on an odd operating list. Um, it was a bit like varicose veins on the general surgical list. You know, they would, it was done at the end and it, it, no one focused on the problem. 
So I, I could see the need early on, I think, and I, I think I could see the need, I could see that the, the place, the time was ripe for a full-time approach to backs, so to, to backs, thinking of backs and operating on backs and what have you. And I, I couldn't understand, you know, rheumatology was well developed, hand surgery, scoliosis surgery, a bit, mm. uh, but I mean, back surgery as a, as an entity was not had not been identified then. Right. But I, I wasn't I wasn't it, I wasn't looking for empire building. I was just I thought if I need some background in spinal work, I mean Hong Kong may be the place to go because of this work that was being uh, being reported by Hodson. I see. I see. So at the time, in our personal conversations, uh, you were not you were single, right? I was still single, and yes. And you just decided Hong Kong is the place to be? Well, and it was still in those days, the training was still very lax. I mean, the Australian system was not defined in training purposes till probably 1970. So the, the, it was still a question of really what you would... Uh, defined for yourself as training. It was still pretty lax. The system was slack in terms of what you did in a training. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did the basic stuff in, in orthopedics at Stanmore, the Royal National Orthopedic, and then a year with Professor Jip James in Edinburgh. And I thought, well, on my way back to Sydney to practice orthopedics, I'll drop in and see what Professor Hodson might offer. Now, I, uh, I, when I started writing to him, which would have been mid-66, mid there was a lot of trouble here with the Cultural Revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, Chairman Mao, and the, the, there was a lot of unrest in, in, in course, here. In yeah. And uh, so there was a lot of uncertainty about whether anything would be on offer, say, in... in 68 when I was thinking about it and uh, so I remember him writing and saying we were in communication he did offer me a part-time job with him at, at Hong with with Hong Kong Hong Kong U and how long was your initial commitment it was six Hong months Kong, six months right? uh, but he did say look you know after November the 10th or whatever uh, if there's no more if there's no uh, if if there's no unrest after in, in November um, of '67, then let's go ahead and start in January '68. And it was quite settled in November. Uh, there were particular celebrations in November of '67, I remember. And he said, "If you're um, if you're still interested, then the job's here." So I nice. came with that, with a view of coming stopping here six months and then, and then going back to drifting on to, to Sydney where I had no appointment or that was you it was very much drifting in those days and just uh, it was not defined like things are now it was uh, it was tough actually getting the training and then hoping to God there'd be a job when you got the training and hoping you would be accredited and uh, and I remember when guys in that era were going back to Australia it, the fellowship in surgery was seemed to be the ultimate thing to have, and so jobs would be uh, advertised in plastic surgery, urology, general surgery, orthopedics. All everyone would be applying for all of these. It didn't matter. So if you know if if you got the job in orthopedics, you did orthopedics. If it came up in plastics, you did mm -hmm. a life in plastics. It was. I mean, that's weird looking back. You think of the specialisation now. Things definitely have changed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's 50-odd years ago. But it, it was a very... Um, it was an interesting time. I mean, it was... Uh, but I was just... I just thank God that I was... that Hodson took me on here because it changed my life, really.